Hey, welcome back to Mr. B's Math Class. Today we're looking at 1.1, Advantages and Disadvantages of Different Graphs. So our two student outcomes today are I can compare information from different graphs, and I can identify the advantages and disadvantages of different types of graphs. So let's look just at kind of some basic terms here. So two things about graphs. The first is that data can be presented using bar graphs, double bar graphs, circle graphs, line graphs, and pictographs. These are all things that you would have uh, looked at in earlier grades, you know, all through one to seven, but that we're looking a little more in depth now. And the big idea is that different graphs may provide different information and display certain types of data better. So you need to know when you're looking at information, what type of graph should you use and why is it better or worse than other types? So let's start looking at the different types of graphs. So our first type of graph here is a bar graph. So if you look at the bar graph, it's got different categories. Here it's looking at what's the favorite Avenger. Oops, I want this. What is our favorite Avenger? So the options we've got are Captain America, Iron Man, Black Widow, Black Panther, and Thor. We can see that this is comparing different categories. And on the side here, we've got the number of students that voted for them. So the advantage of this graph is that it's the best for comparing different categories, because it is. Right now we can see exactly who the favorite Avenger would be. The disadvantage of this graph would be that it's not great for representing information over time. We couldn't tell if you know, the opinions changed or you know, one day they voted for Captain America and the next day a bunch of kids started voting down and up. It wouldn't help us. And it doesn't really tell us uh, the percent. We could figure it out, but it's not going to give us a good clear understanding of what percent of the students picked Captain America or Black Widow or Thor. Okay? Our next one is the double bar graph. So as you can see here, I've got two different types of double bar graphs. One where I've got um, the data separated into two, and here the data is side by side. Now the double bar graph, the advantage of this is it's the best for comparing two sets of data across categories. So as you can see here, the first one, we're looking at the social media preference. So here we're comparing high school students' preferences to elementary schools' preferences. So we can see that you know, in high school, uh, Instagram, we had 20 kind of kids like Instagram. Over here, we have 30% of elementary like Instagram. You can see that it's just comparing two different sets of data. Down here, they've got the same idea. They're just comparing it side by side. So green would be one, and then this might be another uh, group here and here and here. So this is comparing four different groups rather than the two up here. Uh, the disadvantage of this is it's not useful, again, for showing information over time or represented percent. Again, we could calculate percent, but it would be a lot tougher than using a different type of graph. Then we go to the line graph. Um, so this one, the advantage of this is that it's good for showing information over time where the other ones weren't. We can see here that we started at zero seconds, but as we went up, the speed increased at one second, two, three, four, five, six. So it's great at showing us increases or decreases over a period of time, okay? The advantage here is that, the disadvantage is that it's not great for looking at percents. It actually really won't show you percents because we're not, you would never show percents using a line graph because it wouldn't make any sense. So the big thing here is just the fact that line graphs are great for showing data over time. Look at our circle graph. Um, as you can see in the circle graph, we're comparing uh, the favorite types of uh, fast food and the percentages of people people would pick. So the advantage here is that it's the best for comparing categories to the whole using percents. So if we're looking here at the favorite fast food place, we've got Wendy's at 10% of the people pick Wendy's as their favorite fast food place, and that is the entire graph. You can see here that obviously the biggest um, place, the most popular is John Deeds, with 45%. So that tells us we're comparing the 45 to the entire thing, and we know just looking at it, that's the most popular one. The disadvantage of a circle graph is it's hard to you know, determine the number of things in a category. So if I want to know exactly how many people voted for Jollibee, right? That would be a lot tougher. I could do it by dividing my, um, if I knew the amount of people that were surveyed, if it said, oh, out of 100 people, 45 picked Jollibee, I could figure out um, just dividing that percent and, and going with what we have, percent of a number it would just be a little bit tougher. So let's take a look at our next and final graph, which is a picture graph. We don't really need to use any more numbers here. 
they're nice, and the best advantage here is that it, it compares data using symbols. Here you can see that they've used t-shirts, and each t-shirt represents a number. So rather than counting, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they're saying one t-shirt is 10, and so on. They're great if you're a visual learner. They're great to see, actually see the numbers, and you have an idea of what it is. Um, as we can see here, for example, Monday's got, you know, one full t-shirt, which would be 10. Then a half t-shirt, which we would, you know, assume is five, which would mean that on Monday, they sold 15 shirts. Tuesday, 25 shirts. Wednesday, 40 shirts. Thursday, they've got 55 shirts. And on Friday, 15 again. So you can see that to be able to visualize is pretty sweet. The disadvantage of this type of graph is that it's pretty tough sometimes when you're only using part of a symbol. So for example, here, if we got that half, that's kind of easy. But if they start getting into the quarters or less than that to represent, let's say, two and a, two and a half, or I guess I'm here with two and a half wouldn't make sense, but smaller ones, it is harder to look at and make sure you have the right number. And it's also not great for displaying information over time, which it would help with it all. It shows up a little bit here from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, which you can probably do better on a line graph. And same with percents, right? It'd be a lot easier on that circle graph. So while the advantage is the visual and kind of simplifying our counting and numbers, it is harder in some other ways. But really, this is the examples of graphs that we're going to be using um, for the next couple lessons here. So just as long as you're familiar with these, you'll do just fine. That is the end of the lesson for today.